We looked at general linear models with continuous effects where we were adjusting for pretreatment values. Sometimes there might be confounding values, sort of measurements, that it's useful to adjust for. And in that case, you would fit both your effect of interest and any confounding effects in the model. So, for example, if you were looking at um, the influence of diet on animal weight, well, the effect of interest is diet, so that would be fitted as a factor in the model. But of course, if you've got animals that have got different ages, different genders, and that's going to very much affect weight. And unless they're completely balanced between the two diet groups, it might bias your results. But what you can do using a general linear model is just put age and gender into the model. So you're analysing weight and you fit diet, age and gender. So then the results for diet are going to be adjusted for the age and gender of the animals. So that's quite a powerful thing to be able to do if you think your groups are unbalanced in any way. So the next uh, situation might be yeah, you're analysing a measurement taken, in fact it's from the example I was looking at in the last session, and um, we're measuring platelets on some newborn calves, and some of the calves have a disease and other platelet values different. But platelets are also affected by age of the calves, so what you can do in the model is adjust for calf age so you get, um, you avoid any biases in the measurements of disease that are due to age. So I haven't got an example of that, but that's a worked example, but that's another very useful thing to be able to do with general linear models. Just a note of caution about adjustment. You might think, well, it's a great thing to do. I must always adjust for everything that I've recorded. Um, you need to be careful. You might, uh, and choose what you're adjusting for quite carefully because you might remove part of the effect that you're trying to study. So, for example, if you were assessing breed of animal and you um, adjusted for weight, then you would lose some of the overall thing of interest. You know, you might be interested in the fact weight differs between the breeds, and that's part of why something differs. So uh, you might not always want to do it. So you want to choose what you're going to adjust for carefully so that you get the right message. You can say, yes, I've analysed this, adjusted for this, this, and this, and you know that what you've adjusted for is appropriate to the conclusion you want to draw. And the last uh, use, I, I'll um, not do an example just now of predicting using general linear models, but we'll look at that for one of the other techniques after the break. But just to draw your attention to the fact, uh, we had a predictive model for using multiple regression, but now we can bring in factors as well, categories, groupings of the data into a prediction model as well. So if we were predicting calf birth weight, whereas in a multiple regression model we'd have to just put continuous measurements into that, now we can use categorical measurements, sort of binary um, variables, information about the farm, what was it, this type of farm, that type of farm. So you can bring in groupings into the prediction as well, so it's even more useful than multiple regression. So just to recap on reasons for using a general linear model, thinking sort of of all the types of model we've looked at, which are types of general linear model, you can fit more than one effect. You can fit categorical or continuous quantitative effects in a general linear model. Sometimes by choosing effects carefully, you can improve efficiency. You can allow for structure in the data. If the animals are in cages, you can take account of cage effects. If the data are on plates, you can fit a plate effect because there might be overall differences between the plates. Uh, you can fit uh, pretreatment intervention or pre-intervention measurements, like we fitted what red blood cell counts to improve efficiency. Control for confounding factors. If we were looking at the effect of diet on weight, we might want to control for animal age. It's useful to be able to analyse um, two effects in the same analysis and look at their interaction. And also, um, sometimes we might be interested in building a predictive model, predicting something from a range of um, measurements and observations. So, yeah, very useful class of models.